In this video we'll be installing several mods for Monster Hunter Worlds on the Steam Deck or Linux that allow us to increase performance by accessing extra graphics options so we can disable settings that we couldn't disable before, allowing us to gain extra FPS, reduce stuttering and tune the game to our liking. If you enjoy playing on the Steam Deck and the device is the only way for you to be able to play the game then this guide may help you with improving performance in Monster Hunter Wilds. So before we begin, please give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share this video with others, and let's get started. From desktop mode, let's access our web browser and load the four mods that I've pasted in the description of this video. The first is a config file, where we want to scroll down and select files, and depending on your model of Steam Deck, whether it's an OLED or an LCD, we want to click manual download. In my instance I'm going to choose the OLED model and choose slow download and download this to our downloads folder. Second we need to download RE Framework which is going to allow us to load our other mods into the game. So let's click on files, scroll down and choose manual download and once again download this to your downloads folder. The next mod we want to download is more graphics options and we're going to scroll down choose files again Choose this one here, the latest, manual download, select download here, and slow download again to our downloads folder. And the last mod we want is called light environment. And again, we want to scroll down to files. And at the time of this video, we have 2.0 or 2.03 preview. Now when this preview goes into the main branch here, we want to just choose that one. So for now, Choose manual download on 2.03, download again, and slow download to your downloads folder. So you'll have all four of these mods in your downloads folder. Now of course the next thing we want to do is unzip all of these files into our downloads folder. We can go right click and choose open with arc and extract to our downloads folder. The next thing we want to do is right click on home on the left hand side and choose open in new tab and in our home folder let's choose the three lines on the right hand side and then we want to choose show hidden files and if your view isn't like mine just switch to this third display view icon here. Now let's scroll down, choose dot steam, steam, scroll down again to steam apps go inside the common folder and then we want to find Monster Hunter Wilds install folder. Go inside the install folder and if it isn't in this folder and you have the game installed to your micro SD card we want to scroll down on the left hand side and access our micro SD card and find this folder that way. Now inside our Monster Hunter Wilds folder we should immediately see our config.ini file. We want to right click on this and we want to choose rename and at the end of INI, we want to press the Steam and X button, and we want to just simply press X and enter. And now we want to go to our downloads folder, choose the modded config.ini that we extracted earlier, right click, choose copy, go back to our Monster Hunter Wilds folder, right click and choose paste. Afterwards, we want to go back to our downloads folder. Grab our dinput8.dll file, right click, choose copy, go to our Monster Hunter Wilds folder, right click and paste. And lastly, we want to go to our downloads folder again, go inside the light environment folder, and we're going to see RE Framework. And if we open this and auto run, we'll see an LUA file. We want to simply grab this RE Framework folder, right click and choose copy, go back to our Monster Hunter Wilds folder, right click and paste, and we'll have it here like so. Now let's open it, auto run, and we'll see the Light Environment LUA file. Let's go back to our mods, downloads, more graphics options, and we want to make sure that we go inside here, right click 
on more graphics options .lua, copy, go back to your Monster Hunter Worlds folder, and inside the auto run folder, we want to paste. So now you'll have both of these files like so. And if we go back to our main Monster Hunter Worlds folder, we'll see that we have RE Framework, the config.ini, and the dinputa.dll file. And we need to make sure that all four of these have been pasted correctly as shown. Now once that process has been followed correctly, we want to minimize our window. And in the description of this video, I have a launch command pasted, which we need to access and we need to copy all of it like so, right click and choose copy and then we want to access Steam from our taskbar and choose library. We want to come over to Monster Hunter Wilds, we want to select the cog symbol, properties and in our launch options we want to right click and paste like so. So you should have the complete launch command shown exactly. Starting with underscore underscore GL shader disk cache cleanup equals one, wine DLL overrides equals, and these three DLL files, including D input eight dot DLL equals N comma B game mode run percent command percent. Once that's done as shown, let's close steam, close our window and return to gaming mode for one last setup. Now back in gaming mode, there's a few things we need to take care of before we launch the game. The first is going into our controller icon and for our back grip buttons, make sure they're enabled. We want to go to L5, choose add a command, press R1 until we get to numpad and we want to choose the insert key. Afterwards, press back, go to the cog symbol, properties, now inside properties, we want to come over and go to our game resolution and we want to scroll down until we find 1024 by 640. Choose this, choose set resolution for internal and external display. We'll have a launch command that we pasted earlier. Go back, choose compatibility and we need to assign Proton Hotfix like so. Once all of those changes have been made, go back and let's launch the game for the first time. Now as the game loads for the first time, you're going to see this RE framework window appear where we can just simply press L5 to close and choose L5 again to reopen. And this will be our insert key that will toggle the RE framework on and off. So for now, close this. Now once we're on the main menu, let's go ahead and get into game. Once we're in game, let's go to our settings menu, go to our options, and on our display tab, we want to make sure that we have 1024 by 640 for our resolution selected. Make sure everything else is like so. Press RB to go to our graphics tab. Graphics settings, everything should be on lowest. For now, I have frame generation disabled. Upscaling mode for FSR, we can change this to performance can change this to quality later. Everything else is on low. If we go over to sky cloud quality, I can change this to lowest. And then on our last tab, we can change bloom and turn this off. Now let's close our settings and open the RE framework menu by pressing L5. And here we want to hold down the steam button to activate our trackpad and we want to come over to script generated UI at the bottom. We want to go inside light environment, scroll down, and we want to check wind simulation, disable global illumination if you want to, but I'm gonna leave this unchecked, and disable volumetric fog. Now both of these options will net you a bit of an FPS gain. So let's close that and go into more graphics options and here you want to have a play around with some of the settings and find some that work well for you and the first option we'll see is object culling amount which will control the proportion of objects to hide 
and we can move this counter to our preference. We have minimum culling distance, which is how far away before objects start to be hidden, and we can change this accordingly. Now the next is mesh LOD bias, and moving this counter, you're going to see this effect happen with low polygon count. So I recommend leaving this on zero, or you can change it to one if you don't mind some of the appearance changing, or if you really want to, you can have the game look like this. Next is foliage LOD bias. And you can change this from zero up to six, and you can see the grass changing and the trees in the background change this to how you want to. We've got foliage and minimum LOD. And you can see the grass sort of changing when I move this. We've got disabled texture streaming. And checking this, you can see this character's trousers. And the rock just completely changes with no texture on it. So have this checked if you want or not. Small object culling ratio is going to control how much the game hides small objects and by default this is set to 16. Now if you do set this too high some of the characters might have their heads missing over time. I haven't seen this happen yet so change this accordingly. We've got disabled dynamic shadows where you can see we've got shadows here if I check this, they're all gone. And shadow quality, we can set this to its lowest so that we just have absolutely no quality for the shadows. And we've got disable particles, which does make the combat harder because you can't see the projectiles from the monsters and it disables particles and water rippling effects. So check this on or off. You can see the clouds in the top left just completely disappear. And if we go down to advanced, we can see checking for grass, plants, rocks, decor, and decals. Now you can check these and see if it makes a difference in the game. We've got object list update interval, which is when all of these options will update. I just recommend leaving this like so. And the same for interval and table reload. Now you can play around with these as much as you like, so if you find some that work well for you, or other mods that have LUA files that you can add into RE Framework, let us know in the comments what's working for you. And of course if we go into our settings, we can go to frame generation and enable this. Now one last thing, we want to press the quick access menu button, go to the performance tab, and we want to go down and toggle on manual GPU clock. Make sure this is set to 1600 megahertz like so and back in game we're getting around 70 FPS which is a lot more than usual. Now if you don't mind the game's deteriorated look or customised to your preference with these extra graphics options then this mod may work out well for you and improve your experience with the game on the Steam Deck if you just want to play. Now I hope this guide helped you with getting the performance mod for Monster Hunter Wilds working on the Steam Deck. And if you enjoyed and learnt something new today, please give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and share this video with others. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Look out for one another and I'll see you later.